When we want to make cars go faster on a racetrack, most people would expect that the way to do this is by adding more power. But interestingly, the braking performance is just as important, if not sometimes more important. We're here with Ashley from 909 Motorsport to talk about the Bosch Motorsport ABS system fitted to the RP968 Porsche and what he's looking at over the World Time Attack weekend. So Ashley, for a start, the RP968 is probably quite a unique car given not only is it incredibly powerful but it makes a huge amount of downforce and obviously the downforce varies the amount of grip available from the tyre and that's going to be a function of how fast how fast the car's going. What challenges does this provide to an ABS system? It, some of the challenges that we're facing are um, around not having enough brake torque to lock the front wheels at high downforce levels. Um, it, it's it's a challenge getting the, the balance of the braking right um, to suit the aero balance of the car. So yeah, we've been working with um, the guys to try and to try and get that right to improve the lap time. So does this also come down to being a problem that increasing the brake torque with the car? So how much braking force essentially the driver is able to apply in order to be able to lock the wheels. Obviously at high speed, that's gonna be very different to what you need at low speed. Is this a problem or a consideration or does it just mean that at lower speed the ABS is doing its job more frequently? Yeah, I mean the ABS is doing its job more frequently but with uh, the aero on the car, um, it varies with speed. So uh, we will get to a point with the car once we've developed the braking package enough to produce enough brake torque that we'll look at then custom calibration on the unit um, to suit speed dependency for the aero. Now the other element with the, uh, the brake operation here is that it's going to depend on the suspension setup and that also comes into the aero balance or aero performance as well. So what I'm talking about here is getting a, a high downforce car, uh, the suspension setup to work well in a low speed corner and still give mechanical grip but not end up bottoming at very high speeds at the end of the, the front straight here, maybe 270, 280 kilometres an hour. Uh, that's a fine balance. So yep. normally the option here is to run a very high spring rate which compromises the low speed performance or alternatively run the car down onto packers and bump rubbers. Can you talk to us a little bit about the compromises there? Yeah, I mean, that's more going into the suspension side of things with the yarn, but um, we found some gains by um, being able to increase the spring rate and take some packers out to to effectively give the tyre more contact under braking. We were seeing that uh, we would have sort of low friction um, points there where the ABS would be stabilising the car, but really not um, effectively slowing the car. So essentially, to simplify that, are we sort of saying that the car was basically bouncing and, and the rubber was not contacting the, the ground? So obviously then the ABS does its job, it stops the tyre locking, but it's not really slowing the car down? Yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. Um, can we put some numbers around sort of the uh, braking effectiveness? I'm talking here about maybe some G-force numbers for the longitudinal braking force? Yeah, into turn two we see about 3G. Okay, that, that, yeah. that's insane. Uh, can we kind of relate that back to what we would see maybe with a traditional uh, racing sedan without downforce but still on a slick tyre? Yeah, probably something around the 1.2, 1.5 I guess. Um, for example, this car, uh, when we first got involved, we, we were having braking issues with it. Um, we changed the system in the car from an M4 ABS, the, the outgoing or the outgoing model, to the M5. Uh, and then it, the car pulled about 2G in braking then, but we've been constantly sort of improving it with uh, the new system, pad changes, and some of these uh, spring rate changes. So we're, yeah, we've, I guess we've made a 50% increase in in the in the braking G. I mean that is uh, a significant improvement in performance and obviously that relates then to lap time. Uh, in terms of the programming of the ABS unit, uh, for those who really aren't aware, the, the Bosch Motorsport ABS has a multi-position switch that the driver can change the effectiveness or how the ABS I should say operates. You've then got the ability to do custom programming as well. Is that something you're doing on this car or is it still within the, the specifications of the factory calibration? We're running the system right up on the, uh, the highest setting. So we're on uh, setting 11. Um, but it, it is something that once we get the, the brake torque under control and we can actually lock 
the front tyres, uh, in, in the braking, in the high speed braking zones, then yeah, it, it, it is something that we'll look to doing a custom calibration for. Now I'm guessing at the moment with the lack of uh, brake torque on that front axle and the inability to essentially lock the front axle line uh, in the higher speed areas, you're giving away braking performance. I mean, I, I know there's no specifics here, but could you give us a, a guesstimate of like what sort of G-force do you think it will be able to pull once you get additional brake torque into that front axle? To be perfectly honest, I don't know. Um, there's not really any rule book for this. Um, but I mean, we're hoping that if if we can clamp the wheel enough to lock it uh, early in the braking phase, we should see another, I don't know, 0 0.2 or 0.3, hopefully. Um, these are just numbers, but we're not seeing uh, the maximum at the moment. So uh, we'll take any improvement we can get. Now, uh, just relating this back to the mechanical bias uh, of the braking system front to rear, so a conventional pedal box I assume in the car with a driver adjustable bias. Now obviously the, the ABS comes in over and above that, but I think most people sort of forget that we still want the mechanical bias set correctly, but is, am I right in assuming here that that mechanical bias is quite different, or the ideal mechanical bias I should say, is going to be quite different from low speed to high speed? Yes, it will, um, which is part of the the speed dependent calibration that we'll be able to give the car because it all account for the the aero load at speed, um, so that the ABS operation will will then be able to take care of it. Um, it does run a conventional pedal box. We do have a split, um, and it's actually not that unconventional what you might think in terms of uh, the split that we see. But yeah, again, it varies with the aero balance on the car. Another element, as I understand it, with that Bosch Motorsport ABS, it's obviously monitoring the brake pressure to the front and the rear circuit. So, as I understand it, will essentially give you feedback on what it thinks should be the ideal mechanical balance, so that you can then change the bias to suit. Yeah, it does. It it looks at uh, a variety of parameters to to give you a suggested starting point to look at the brake balance, uh, and it's a really good tuning uh, tool when you're using the system to get the the system in the zone. Look, thanks for giving us a little bit more insight into that braking system. I mean, obviously the car has just broken the outright lap record, so the brakes are working, but really interesting to understand that there's also potentially quite a bit more potential to unlock. Yeah, that, I think that's the exciting part about this event, that it's great to see what you can do, but it's exciting to see what you can do. Yeah. Thanks, Ashley. No worries. Thanks, Andre. like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed we release a new video every week and if you like free stuff we've got a great deal for you click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson